Today, we're going to be taking a look at a Backman Windhoff MPV. Roll the intros. Hello and welcome back to Geometry Junction, I'm Peter. Today, as the title suggests and as the thumbnail predicts, we're going to be taking a look at a Backman Windhoff MPV. So without further ado, we're going to get down to the workbench, have a look at the box, get it out of the box, have a look around and see what we need to do to get this puppy ready for DCC operation. So here is the vehicle in question, but before we get into the vehicle, I'm going to give you a history of the Windhoff MPV two-car two-piece set. Now the Windhoff multiple multi-purpose vehicle or MPV for short was built between 1998 to the present day, and there have been a total of 50 units built, of which 18 are just a single unit. And 32 are, as you can see here, of the double units. These units were built by Windhoff in Munster, Germany, and were based on the Windhoff Cargo Sprinter. The units entered service in 1998 and up until now, the present day, in the UK under Rail Track. And after the takeover of uh, Network Rail, obviously, these guys are now branded in Network Rail Livery. These units being a multi-purpose vehicle, MPV again for short, can be used for anything that the railway system requires as each unit is has a flat bed uh, wag, wagon and can have containers put on to and secured down by the locking system from an ISO standard container. Now what that means is, guys, is all these components here are interchangeable and all they're held on by is the four locking nuts that you would see on normal intermodal containers so it's a quick and simple easy change of the use of the vehicle so that is a very good thing about these units on the actual modeling world and also in the real world the Units are fitted with two rail pack diesel engines and have a power output of 355 horsepower for each engine and obviously a combined horsepower of 710. The units have been used on the West Coast main lines as high output wiring trains or HOWTs. Now basically what that would mean is Obviously, these units would have obviously be replaced and di different ones will be put on there. So crews can obviously stand up on top of the units uh, with harnesses and they'll be able to put the overhead lines up on the catenary for, say, like, like, like I said, in the, on the West Coast main line. Um, this was done primarily because these units can lay between 1000 and 1500 meters of overhead line within four hours shortening the time by the old version by using uh converted rail vehicles from british rail it took them 12 hours with the old version so you can see it's taken it's actually like it took them 16 hours but with these vehicles it saves the working time by 12 hours so these units have come in very handy on the west coast main line another way they could be used is in a form of a track geometry and camera train which obviously tracks uh, checks the geom geometry of the track so if it's going that way it can t tell that or if it's going you know a bit twisty and it shouldn't be obviously these locos when they're adapted with other units can measure that Unfortunately, in their short lifespan, these units have been involved in three accidents or incidents. The first one was in December 2006. A unit was hit by a tree and then became a runaway. No one was injured. 
uh, no one was killed but this train was a runaway and it was a problem so it lost its brakes the second incident happened on March 2016 when a unit on the East Lancashire Railway again became a runaway and ended up on the Manchester Metro link where it was derailed by using a catch point. Again, no one was injured and no one was killed. But the third incident in October 2017, after hitting a tree in Scotland. Now, there's a second thing. Two hitting trees became a runaway again because the tree had actually banged or knocked out the braking system underneath the bogies and also disconnected the uh, lines between the two units, the brake lines, so the, the system had absolutely no brakes at all. The train ran for over four miles and the two members of crew that were on board had to jump from the units for safety reasons, obviously, and they did incur some minor injuries. So in the short lifespan, guys, these units have been three instances, all becoming runaways. So obviously, these are <clears throat> not the best in an accident. So <clears throat> that's the brief history done, guys. So we're going to have a look around the model now. So it's the usual Backman double fronted uh, front fascia. Obviously, the usual red at the bottom with the, with the Backman logo, blue at the top with the Backman logo, blue at one side. But the one we want to know about the most is which one have I got? And I have got 31-577, and it's the Windhoff MPV in rail track. And it is a 21 DCC uh, ready loco. So if you're a DC only operation uh, railway, then this straight out the box can go straight onto your track and away you go. If, like me, you want to be putting this onto DCC, and then obviously what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to fit a 21 pin decoder into the system which i have bought which is just sitting there and just for you guys to know it is 36-557 and it's a four function 21 pin decoder uh made by esu which is obviously the same company that makes the ecos command station as well so without further ado let's get it out the box and let's have a look around shall we Uh, okay, um, by the looks of things straight away, we've got some paperwork. So we have the usual 12 month guarantee from Backman. We then have the instructions on how to tell you how to fit a DCC chip, or if this was already DCC fitted, you can how to show you how to take the chip out, put the blanking plate back in, so you could use this on. Um, DC as well. I believe this does have a fitted speaker in there already. So all you would have to do is literally just put a sound chip into one of these and you would have sound. It also shows you again where to oil things and how to get to the motor because the motor is under the underneath the side of the wagon. So you've got four screws there underneath here to <coughs> undo the wagon. Shows you the recommended way of removing the cab obviously to get to the gears of the bogey shows you where to put the extra detail parts and things like that so let's get rid of that bit so let's get these out of the box and let's have a look again there's a bit more paperwork in there but that's just for the collectors club um, which we all have seen before now straight out of the boxes, I can see there are two packs of detailing parts. You've got this one here, which looks like it's got uh, spare NEM couplings. Looks like it could be steps in there, uh, could be brake uh, pipes in there as well. So that's that one. And this one here, let's have a look. This one has got one of those funky uncoupling tools. Again, you've got another NEM uh, tension lock coupling and looks like you've got another set of wheels there um, which looks like yep yeah, it's got a worm gear in the middle as well and looks by the looks of things it's got traction tires on the ends and again looks like you've got steps in there and brake pipes as well 
So, getting the locos out. This one seems to be the dummy car sides. So, without further ado, let's carefully get this one out of the box. Now, I will say this is from Tony's Trains. Um, as you saw from my last video of what my, on my shopping trip. I've got a few bits and pieces from Tony's. So, this is a second-hand unit. But looking at it so far, I don't think it's even ever been out of the uh, box by the looks of things. I think this person has just bought it and kept it as it is. So let's just get rid of these boxes. No, as you can see, there is plastic already on there. And as you can see, guys, as in the real world, you can remove all of the units if you want to and ah that's interesting now this is the first time i've taken these bits off guys and if i'm going to zoom you in that to me looks like a 21 pin dcc decoder so and just literally found just there. There's the blanking plate. So somebody has already retrofitted this to DTC operation. So if you look at that guys, I'll turn it around. It may be slightly different but as you can see, there is definitely a 21 pin DCC decoder in there. So I don't need to use this. So, but out of the box, that is how easy it is guys to put a DCC decoder into the system. You just actually pull this blanking plate, which is already off, off of there and put your 21 pin DCC decoder in. And once you're finished, you just put all your units back in the right place he says just like that now one thing i will say it does feel a bit loose putting these on so i could say possibly that you could and no we don't have sprung buffers we do have illuminated uh, lights at the front and back and looks like we have snow powers on front and back as well um, Detail wise very very well very well detailed and as you can see guys just there That looks like that is where the speaker could go or if there's already a speaker in there All you'd have to do is change that chip from a normal to a sound fitted and then obviously you can get sound on your loco straight away quite a simple and easy fix there so again we'll just take this one off and as you can see it's just blank underneath and this is quite heavy so this is obviously in place of a bit of weight missing from the other one now this is a brilliant way of showing you guys um of what i mean by a cargo sprinter it is literally like a lorry where you just Pick your units up, pop them on in place, and away you go. It's as simple as that. And that is why they're called a cargo sprinter. It's basically like a flatbed lorry. Absolutely brilliant design. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to get this onto the ECOS and get it programmed in and see how it goes. So, as I predicted, there was a DCC chip in there. It's not a sound fitted one. I have tested that. Um, so, it's just a normal DCC chip. I've just put the address onto it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one here off. Take these units off. And obviously, there you go. There you can see the actual motor there in it's glory so it's easy accessible easy to oil up and you can see with all these bits of pieces of the level of detail and printing on the bottom of the mpv is absolutely outstanding so from four batman an absolute brilliant brilliant job 
and like it says it's clearing britain's railway so on the side nicely picked out there's no evidence of um paint going into another paint so the lines are really nice and crisp so without further ado let's actually see if this one runs and straight away out the blocks It runs and runs very nicely. Just gonna try and get see if I can get to do a crawl speed for you guys. So it could possibly do possibly do a nice little crawl. And what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to pause the camera quickly, take you around the front, and we're going to have a look at the, the lights on the unit. So here you can absolutely clearly see that you've got the lights at the front. Let's bring the camera back into focus. There we go. And you can see there is a little tiny light at the top as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the direction of the vehicle. And there you can see you have your red lights at this end so obviously once this is connected it will be um lights at either end and as you can see i've just turned it up quite high on the ecos and as you can see it's very very stable very happy just to sit on there and run and run and run so putting it on a DCC Concepts Rolling Roads, you can oil this and run it in absolutely brilliantly. Wow, what a bargain we got there, guys. Um, I only paid £100 for this Batman Windhoff MPV, and it already came with a DCC chip installed. Um, I did scan it on the ECOS, and it came up with a factory set of number three. So whoever had it in, the, in, the, in its previous owner, Obviously, if they had addressed it, they put it back to the manufacturer's setting. So that is one thing I will say, guys. If you are buying or selling locos, please make sure that if you're buying, that you ask the seller what the DCC address is set to. And if you are selling, then it is advisable to put the decoder back to its factory set of address free. That way, it, it stops confusion. Um, I'm quite lucky, lucky with, I've got the ECOS issue command station, I can just put my locos on the track if it's got a DCC chip in it, press scan, and it will tell me what the address is, and then I can change the address to what I want to. But if you've got, you know, like a Hornby Elite, a Gage Master, uh, Prodigy, an NCE power cap, you have not got that function to be able to scan that chip. Um, so if you're, like I said, if you are buying, um, a already DCC chipped loco on places like eBay. Always make sure you get the DCC address from the person that's selling it. It will save a lot of hassle and a lot of heartache. What do I think of the Backman Windhoff MPV? Very good loco, very good little performer. It's just been round the track and it is running really, really nicely. It doesn't need any warning at all. Um, the only thing, detail-wise, is absolutely brilliant, spot on. Can't fault Batman. Everything is in the right places. Flawless paint jobs uh, all over the loco and all over the cab ends and throughout all the printing of like the warning labels are all in the right places. And some of them, if you get them under, under a magnifying glass, they are readable as well. So absolute brilliant detail. Um, the only complaint that I will say is the handrails on the side of the actual containers themselves are a little bit flimsy and can bend if you mishandle them and possibly could snap. Also, the actual units that actually go on top of there, there's no actual way of locking them onto the bed of the unit. So it could be possible that you may need something like black tack, or if you want to go down the glue side of things, you're going to have to glue them on. Because I think if, the, if it does go around a bit of a bend, a bit sharp and a bit quick, I think those units could possibly fall off of there. Um, I've not witnessed it personally yet. Um, I've not seen it on anybody else's um, channels where they're reviewing this item, but it could be something that could happen. If you're going around a bend a bit too quick, those uh, units on the back could fly off and could also 
cause a derailment. But above all, an absolute blinding little uh, model. I would highly recommend them. So if you can get this at a nice price and uh, second hand, then definitely go for it. The lighting fixtures is obviously is only white at one end and red at the other end and vice versa. But they are nice and nicely picked out. They're not too bright. So back when I've done their good homework on that. Would I buy another one if I could find, say, like a network rail version? Definitely. I would definitely buy another one. Hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. As always, I've enjoyed making it for you. If you have liked it, please hit that like button on the left-hand side. If you've got any questions or comments about the Windhoff MPV set, then please ask down below in the comments section. If you're a subscriber, great big thumbs up and thank you for helping me get over the 1,000 subscriber mark. Now, um, we will now progress until we can get to the 2,000 mark. Let's see how quickly we can get to there, shall we? Probably be a very long time. But let's see how it goes. If you're not a subscriber, you can make your mind up to subscribe to my channel. You just have to press the button on the right-hand side to subscribe. And then press the little bell icon, click on all, and then that way you get notified of every video that I publish. Until the next time, guys, if you want to carry on watching videos from my channel, there should be a link coming up here and here. And like I said, until the next time, guys, look after yourselves, protect your loved ones. But above all, happy modelling and bye-bye from Chelmsford Junction.